you so much for hosting this event and for the honor to share this special day of Valentine's Day with all of you and to share the story of the science of lasting love. Okay, so love is universal and it's closely intertwined with the evolution of our species. It serves to keep our species alive in many respects, from reproduction to cooperation. The focus of this talk is going to be on romantic love, defined as an intense longing for union with another. Well, <laughs> Oscar Wilde had a, a way with words, and um, romantic love wasn't always associated with marriage, but more recently in the West and in modern times, uh, there has been a rise in love-based marriages. And with that rise, scientists, artists, and lay people have wondered, can love last? Indeed, people marry for love, they die for love, and they report ending their marriages if love fades. Not surprisingly, love and marriage is associated with relationship satisfaction and less attraction for alternative partners. Love also seems to be good for us. It's linked with a great many factors, and I won't go into all of them, but I'll name just a few. It's been linked with psychological well-being, with life satisfaction, and with self-esteem. But this poses a conundrum because love is important for our vitality. It's important for the vitality and the stability of our relationships. And uh, at the same time, it's been proposed to die out inevitably over time. And high divorce rates, perceptions in the media of monogamy being monotony, and the like, all point to a negative picture of love lasting in relationships. Correspondingly, many prominent theories suggest that love dies out over time. Some suggest that love's purpose is to bring individuals together to reproduce and create successful offspring. And in even the most optimistic, optimistic of theories suggest that at best, couples can expect that romantic love with passion will fade out into companionate love with a warm afterglow of friendship and devoid of sexual attraction and intensity. So I embarked on a journey to answer the question of whether love could last. Interviewing couples in the suburbs of New York, I discovered that love could last. These couples were zesty, full of life, and full of, love, full of love for one another. They continued to long for each other, to feel attraction, and even when their life got tough and things got really busy, with children, without children, through illness, through better or for worse, they continued to keep their love alive. And I want to emphasize that they continued to keep their love alive. However, their love was different from infatuation. These couples did not report uncertainty, intrusive thinking, insecurity, or emotional ups and downs. They had the calm and security of a stable, loving relationship with intense passion. But the story doesn't end there. So 
I continued my search for lasting love. Digging through decades of research, I once again found that love could last. When separating love from infatuation, over 150 couples married for approximately eight years reported the highest levels of love on a widely used passionate love scale. These individuals reported intense love in their long-term marriages. They weren't reporting infatuation. So when we separated romantic love from infatuation, a very different picture emerged. Also, a meta-analysis with a compilation of about 25 studies carried out over the last few decades showed that romantic love without infatuation was associated with greater marital satisfaction. More evidence for lasting love comes from research with brain imaging. Our group with Dr. Helen Fisher, Dr. Arthur Aaron, and Dr. Lucy Brown was the first to look at the neural correlates of lasting love. We scanned the brains of 17 individuals in marriages of about 20 years, and we showed them facial images of their partners, their close friends, and a highly familiar person to control for facial familiarity and close friendship. And what we found was that the brains of individuals in long-term love lit up like the sky on the 4th of July. I remember seeing the first brain of a person in long-term love. It was striking. I had never seen anything like this. And at the time, I didn't know because I didn't have a comparison. And now I know that it really lights up like a fireworks show. More excitingly, or just as excitingly, these individuals showed activation in the reward system of our brain, specifically in the ventral tegmental area. At that time, about four studies had published results showing activation of the ventral tegmental area in early stage romantic love. The ventral tegmental area is important as it's a dopamine-rich site which helps us to learn and to have the de desire, the drive, to seek rewards that we need to live for things that we value, for things like food, like water, and like love. We replicated these results using a similar experimental paradigm as studies of early stage romantic love, but this time in lasting love. We found additional activations in areas important for feelings of calm, warmth, and attachment. Specifically, we found activation in the globus pallidus ventral pallidum area. This area is critical for monogamous pair bonding in non-human mammals. It also has important implications for mood, health, and addiction. So we're starting to uncover the neural basis of human attachment. We also investigated the neural correlates of marital satisfaction. And we have good evidence now with this sample of long-term married individuals, individuals in new relationships, and newlyweds showing a negative association between activation in the subcolossal cingulate gyrus and marital satisfaction. This area is important for depression and shows decreased activity with satiation for chocolate. Love is important for keeping our species alive and flourishing. It seems to be a functional adaptation that evolved to keep us vital, to keep us alive and zesty. Brain imaging research 
has advanced the science of lasting love in a few ways. It provides some clues for how we can keep our, our love alive. For example, the ventral tegmental area is evoked by, by stimuli that are novel and challenging. So, for couples sharing new, exciting, and self-expanding activities together can enhance the feelings of romantic love. Laughter, playing, and affection are also important for the reward and dopamine system. So laugh, play, and touch often. We also know that thinking positive is associated with reward activity and have good evidence from a national survey of households in the United States that thinking positive thoughts about one's partner is the top predictor of staying in love over time. Finally, the VTA is associated with working for rewards, with motivation. So work for it. Do nice things for each other. Make an effort. The reward of love plays infinite dividends. This is an exciting time for us because research tells the story, I think, that our destinies are in our hands. There are things that we can do to keep love alive. It's not just up to chance. And while there's more work to be done, we can stop and ponder on the complex nature of love and how it serves to keep our species alive and flourishing. That's all. <laughs>